thanks for joining us today on this very special City Talk. I'm Maria Soreo. In an effort to get to know our city council better here in the city of Rancho Palos Verdes, I had the opportunity to go one-on-one -on -one with our Mayor Pro Tem, David Bradley. Now on a side note, the Mayor Pro Tem and I were six feet apart for the interview, so we safely removed our masks. Here is my exclusive interview. So in talking to you, one of the things that, that jumped out is you are a California native. There aren't too many of us left here. You grew up in Linwood. Tell me about that. Well, I actually grew up in Southgate. I was born in Linwood. Uh, my family lived in Southgate. My uh, grandparents had uh, been in Southgate for about 35 years. Uh, my mother was actually born in Southgate, and I was born in uh, Linwood. Uh, so that's where I lived uh, for the first several years. Um, before my mom and I, we moved to uh, Redondo Beach and we lived uh, close to the King Harbor sign in Redondo Beach, just up the street from there. So we lived there for several years before we moved to Rancho Palos Verdes. We've been in Rancho Palos Verdes since 1972, when we moved about a year before the city was founded. So I have fond memories of the city founding, um, and uh, um, we have. Gr I grew up here. I went to elementary school in Palos Verdes. I went to Soliato Elementary. Then I went to Ridgecrest Intermediate, and then graduated from Rolling Hills High School in 1982. Interesting. When people say, "Oh, what's it like to grow up in California or Southern California?" What would your answer be to that? Awesome. <laughs> exactly. I mean, whenever you can live in a place where you truly don't have to look at the weather to figure out what you're going to wear, mm -hmm. um, it's 72 degrees plus or minus 5 degrees always. But don't let anybody know that from outside of Southern California. We can't we get have all enough the secrets. Exactly. exactly. That's right. Now, you ventured off to go to college. You went to San Diego. I did. I went. Oh. My big adventure for, was... I went 120 miles south, still in Southern California, to San Diego. And I went to San Diego State University, got a degree in aerospace engineering. And upon graduation, I worked for uh, General Dynamics in San Diego um, for about uh, 10 years. Um, before, uh, with industry consolidation, they moved the division from San Diego to Denver, Colorado. Um, I decided that uh, actual snow that I didn't get to choose was not a great idea, so I stayed in Southern California and uh, came back and uh, moved to uh, Seal Beach and Huntington Beach, where I lived for a couple of years while I was working for McDonnell Douglas. Now, you're also involved with the Trojans as well, USC. I am. So when I moved back to Southern California, I took the opportunity to get a graduate degree mm -hmm. um, from the University of Southern California. My family are huge Trojans. Yeah. Um, my mother got her uh, master's in counseling at uh, USC. Mm -hmm. And in fact, as a single mother getting her degree in counseling, uh, she would bring me to class sometimes. And they... Uh, her specialty was child counseling, and they would do some of their testing on me. So I was a in-house test subject at USC. So I have fond memories of uh, going to USC as a child and uh, sitting watching my mom in class and also being the uh, demo subject with the professors. Well, once a Trojan, always a Trojan. Absolutely. We learned that when uh, we did the, the, the drive through birthday party. Mm -hmm. With uh, Dr. Bartner. Exactly, Dr. Bartner. And all the people that live here that are Trojans, I mean, everybody came out. So, little known fact with Dr. Bartner mm -hmm. is he was my trumpet teacher in the 70s uh, when he was just starting at USC uh, through a Trojan connection. My mom uh, scheduled and I went down to... Um, his, uh, his townhouse uh, down in Torrance off of Anza when he was just starting at USC. And he gave me a couple Trojan les uh, trumpet lessons. I'll always remember one of the first songs I ever really learned how to play well was Fight On. Of course. <laughs> yeah. On the trumpet. Absolutely. That's a, that's a given at USC. You know that. Um, we're in Southern California, the land of Hollywood. You were actually on a television show. I was actually I was uh, I was actually in a movie with uh, Walter Matthau and Jack Lemmon. I had a nice. bit part um, in the um, unofficial credits. I was a uh, runny nose kid on a bus. Very nice. And then later, after I graduated in San Diego, my uh, roommates and I were sitting around one Sunday. I happened to get the Los Angeles Times on the front page of the classifieds. Was a open casting call for a TV show. 
my roommates and I thought it would be a lark, so we all three signed up and did a phone interview. Only one of us was invited back to do a in-person interview, and then I was ba invited back for the actual taping. And the name of that show was? I was on the all-new dating game. Very I, nice. I was bachelor number one. Very good. I was going to ask you which one. I one, was two bachelor or three. number one. And I knew I was in trouble when the um, music started playing, the stage started to turn around, and I turned to the guy next to me and I said, Do you realize we're about to make asses of ourselves on national television? Pretty much. And his response was, oh, Yeah, isn't it great? <laughs> At that moment, I knew I was in real trouble. And he was the one that was selected. Is that he right? was the one that ended up getting selected, yes. What was that experience like? It was actually really surreal. It was one of those things that you sign up to do, you're doing. It's like jumping out of an airplane. It's yes. like it all seems good until the lights go on, the music starts playing, and you're going, uh, Toto? <laughs> I don't think we're in Kansas anymore. That's it. Now, you have a better story about how you met your wife. So, so you have to tell us that. I did. So I met my wife. Um, so I met my wife um, about 13 years before our first date. Okay. Um, I actually spent the weekend at her uh, townhouse 13 years before our first date. Um, the woman I was dating at the time happened to have an ex-roommate from undergrad that uh, lived in Los Angeles, and we went up to visit her, and we stayed there. Um, uh, the woman I was dating was from San Diego, and we happened to be staying with my future wife, unbeknownst to any of us. Um, years later, when I moved back to Los Angeles, um, my ex-girlfriend, who still was in contact uh, professionally, because she works in the same industry, said, oh, you remember Gretchen? You, sh you guys should get together. You should go have a drink. Uh, you guys, you know, neither one of you are dating anybody in that right now. Go have fun. So we had a drink, and the rest is history. That is amazing. So your ex-girlfriend set you up with your wife. My ex-girlfriend set me up with my wife, right. And you had a very interesting way that you proposed to your wife. And yeah. I have to ask you if she knew it was coming or if she was completely shocked. She was completely shocked. She yeah. actually thought it had, was coming before and not one to want to do things conventionally. Um, um, we were on a vacation in Cozumel, Mexico. Mm -hmm. And I proposed to my wife 60 feet underwater. Um, I like to joke that, um, you know, if uh, she would have said no, it would have been a tragic diving accident. But she said yes. <laughs> Thankfully. Um, and, uh, yeah, and as we were waiting to come up and we were doing our safety stop, a, about a 13-foot hammerhead shark swam by through the group. I mean, beautiful animal. But yes, yeah, so I, I proposed to her underwater. I didn't bring the ring with me because I had this fear that I would have this bright, shiny object. Some fish would come by and snap and, and, and I'd be <laughs> swimming after it. Um, when I did propose, I wrote it on a dive slate. My wife was very excited. She grabbed the dive slate as she did that. She knocked my mask off, <laughs> knocked the regulator out of my mouth. Fortunately, I, I'm a pretty comfortable diver, and I, as she's writing yes on the dive slate, Aww. and I'm upside down, I'm putting all my equipment back on. That is such a great story. That is a great story. And then the ring came later. The ring was on the boat. Okay. Um, on the dive was my father and my father's best friend. They were also diving with us. They were about 10 to 15 feet above us when I, when I proposed. So they were clapping underwater. And then um, my uh, father's best friend's wife was on the boat and had the ring when we surfaced. Such a great story. That is really great. You mentioned that you were fascinated with aerospace. When did that so sort of come or how did that come to be? So I was fascinated with aerospace from an early age. My grandparents, like I said, lived in Southgate, which mm -hmm. is under the flight path of LAX. Right. So from my earliest moment, I can remember sitting out in their backyard, watching the airplanes come over at land at LAX. And we were right at the point where the airplanes would be on final and they would start to put their landing gear down. Depending on the aircraft type, some would have them up, some would have them down. But I remember always looking up at the airplanes and being fascinated with flight. So that was always something that interested me. And as I got older, it still interested me. 
Um, I wanted to, at one point, go into the Air Force and fly jets. Mm -hmm. um, that, for various reasons, just never worked out. But I stayed with my love of aerospace engineering, got a degree in aerospace engineering, went and worked in the um, uh, rocket and spacecraft development industry that I've been working in for the last I want to say how many years? A few. A few. Just a few years. Yes. I'm a graybeard now, officially. <laughs> we'll just we'll skip a few years. Um, when did you decide that you wanted to be in public service? So I've always wanted to be in public service. My grandfather, who I was very close to, instilled in me a sense of uh, give back uh, public service. Uh, he was always very politically minded. Um, I don't think he ever missed an election to vote in. Um, it was never really about uh, politics per se as, right, you know, you have to think this way, but it, it was you have to participate. And if you don't participate, you don't get to criticize what's going on. Mm -hmm. So my grandfather kind of instilled that in me from an early age, and, um, and I've always wanted to give back and participate. So when I moved back to Palos Verdes, um, I started with different things. I was the vice chairman of the Limita Railroad Museum Foundation. Um, then a little bit closer to home, I uh, got on the uh, Finance Advisory Committee, or the FAC. Mm -hmm. um, then things kind of, I got really busy with work, and I uh, stopped city do uh, work for a couple years. Uh, then I reapplied for the FAC. And um, city council, when they were doing the interview, determined that I would fit better on the planning commission. So I ended up being on the planning commission where I met uh, former uh, Mayor Krushank, mm -hmm. um, who is a fellow engineer. So we had a lot of things in common. Um, and then um, I went through the uh, planning commission, eventually becoming the chairman of the planning commission um, and followed in uh, Mayor, or former Mayor Krushank's steps and he was chairman and then ran or uh, yeah chairman of the planning commission ran for uh, city council and was elected and then i did the same thing a couple years later did somebody suggest that you run for city council or something you thought about or actually several people uh suggested within the city that thought i would be a good candidate for uh, city council that i have uh you know i people believe that i and i think i do have a strong um sense of community. Mm -hmm. um, I love Palos Verdes. I've spent a majority of my life here um, and I really wanted to give back. So various folks that are in civic um, life here in the peninsula all convinced me that it was something I should probably do. What was the experience like running and just meeting people in the community and that was it was it was fun. I really enjoyed that. You might guess that I'm not shy. So Not I like to talk to people. So mm -hmm. it was really fun getting out and talking to people and finding out what people's concerns were, uh, what they wanted, what they didn't want, um, their gripes, their um, positive things. Um, it was really fun getting out there and talking to people. And I still like that. Could you have ever imagined that you'd be serving during a global pandemic? Absolutely not. Um, the things that have transpired since getting elected have been transformative. I mean, the things and the way the peninsula has changed in the last uh, two years has been unprecedented. I mean, our, um, our businesses within the city have suffered tremendously, uh, and we've done whatever we can to help. Um, um, it, it's been hard on our citizens um, with being locked down, um, access to the vaccine. Um, all of that has been really, really difficult. So, no, I could never imagine that we would have been in this type of situation uh, two years ago when I ran. I think the one thing about the city is that the, the residents, the community is so tightly knit and everybody's really there to help each other. We kind of expand on that. Yeah, I mean, the peninsula in all four cities, and RPV in specific, you know, it's it's a very close knit community, mm -hmm. and um, and that's what a lot of people come to Palos Verdes for is the sense of community. There may not be a tremendous 
nightlife here. You know, after 10 o'clock, the streets kind of get rolled up. That's true. Which was one of the biggest things when my wife and I moved here. I had grown up here. My wife was li living in West Los Angeles where she could walk to a dozen fantastic restaurants. She wasn't used to the fact that you would have to get and actually drive somewhere. Right. But the tremendous sense of community here is, uh, is what brings people here and what makes it so much fun to serve. Mm -hmm. um, and what is also unique about RPV is the amount of our citizens' involvement. Mm -hmm. We have so many people that are involved. They express their opinions, they get involved, they help out, uh, which is amazing to have that type of uh, enthusiasm and energy within the community. And one of the projects that you were able to do, even through COVID, was the sister, sister city agreement with the Sakura City, Japan. Yes. You actually went there before this all started. What was that experience like? So it was actually really fortunate. I do business with Japan, and I have been traveling back and forth to Tokyo before the pandemic. And the mayor and the um, uh, councilman from Sakura City and some of the staff had come here hmm. um, after I was elected and I got to meet them and they, ex they explained to us the exchange program that had been going on at Marylist uh, Intermediate School mm -hmm. where both of my sons had gone. I was aware of the exchange program to Japan but never really focused on the city. Um, in talking to the mayor when we had a lunch when they were here um, I got really excited about Sakura, and uh, that's when we started talking about a sister city program. I was able to uh, go visit the city in one of my trips to Tokyo uh, when I was there on business. I took an extra day. I took the uh, bullet train up to Sakura. Uh, I got to meet their entire city council, um, all of their commissioners. I got to meet the entire city staff. Uh, they gave me the uh, King's Tour of the city. Uh, they have a magnificent museum um, with the uh, talking about the old city that uh, Sakura originally was. Um, beautiful city. My one regret was I went in February and I didn't get to go during the cherry blossom time. Right. And I believe Sakura has Sakura City has like 40 different types of cherry trees. Mm -hmm. And uh, from the pictures I've seen, Beautiful. it's absolutely magnificent mm -hmm. uh, when the cherry blossoms bloom. So you've got two sons that go to Peninsula High School where you went to school. How yes. surreal is that? The first back to school night I went to was like going back in time. Right. Um, and sitting in the same desk, in the same room, with the same linoleum, really the only difference that I could tell was there were no more chalkboards that they were whiteboards. Exactly. But other than that, it looked like I was going back in time and it was Groundhog's Day. Um, I didn't fit quite as well in the desks anymore, but uh, it was really, really, uh, it was fun going back. And uh, it's fun listening to my uh, children when they come home, talking about uh, going down to the pit for workouts. And, Snake pit. Uh, yeah. And uh, it's just, it's a lot of fun hearing all that. Your sons are involved in sports, baseball, tennis, lacrosse, is that right? Right, so both, um, I met was uh, a coach for both Little League as well as soccer. Um, after going through the full programs, both my children decided that they want to play a different sport. So uh, my oldest son, when he became a freshman in high school, got turned on to lacrosse. And I think part of it was uh, playing baseball. If you hit one of the opposing players with the bat, you're thrown out of the game. That's it. In lacrosse, you can check your fellow player with your stick and is considered a good play. He thought, huh. <laughs> this is more um, fun. So no, he played uh, lacrosse at uh, Peninsula High, uh, really enjoyed it for a couple seasons. Uh, then he decided to um, uh, pair back on sports and concentrate on academics. Um, 
he's getting ready to go to university next year. Uh, we're halfway through the uh, acceptance process. Uh, he applied to 15 different universities and we're waiting for um, which ones he gets accepted to and which ones he doesn't. Is he looking to venture out more than San Diego or move he more is. than 100 he, miles? Or? He, he has applied to the big universities here locally. He did apply to San Diego State, uh, to UCLA, to okay. USC. Um, and to UC Irvine. So he, he has, some of his top ones are local, but he also has applied, applied to some outside the area as well. Very, all great schools. Yes. All great schools. Um, are you an LA sports fan? I am. I'm a uh, longtime Dodger fan. I remember going to the Dodger games in the 60s and 70s, and that's another kind of throwback. And one of the things I really like about going to Dodger games is going to Dodger Stadium and it isn't one of the mega stadiums. It's still Dodger Stadium. It is. And, you know, a Dodger dog at Dodger Stadium, I don't know what it is, but it just tastes different. That's right. Because it's a Dodger dog and you're at Dodger Stadium. Yes. So a late afternoon game in the, in the uh, early summer, there is nothing like it. Very good, very good. Well, thank you so much for spending some time with us and inviting me, all of us, to your home. It's beautiful. Absolutely. And, uh, it's fun to get to know you a little better. And that will do it for today's show. Thanks so much for watching. I'm Maria Soreo, and we'll see you next time.